Okay, I start out by going. <coughs> yeah, it's gonna be see through. So I'm gonna go to file and new. I'm gonna open up my file. So I'm gonna start with the cut. Then press OK. Um, the first thing I do when I get inside of Substance Painter is bake. So I go to the texture set settings. Mommy, can I show you something? Mommy. Yes, what you gotta show me? Um, it's something that is very beautiful. Okay, what is it? Okay, I have to show you something. Okay, well then you have to wait. Oh, okay. Okay. I go to texture set settings and then I go to bake mesh maps. My mommy said I have to wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> Under output size, I choose 2048. Somebody asked before, can you go higher? You can, but it's kind of no point because Second Life is 2048. And then I go to bake. Oh, sorry. Um when you're baking you either have just an object or you have an object and a hd version of the object for this is just the object so we check on use low poly mesh as high poly so it'll bake onto itself yeah my grandpa got her some flowers she loved them Yes, it is so cute. She bought me one. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm recording. y'all hear her <laughs> okay once it's done go to return to paint a mode and then I use a filter that's called GL lighting which basically gives you even lighting on front and back and also, I use a HDI I created. I created a few that's evenly lit on the front and back, so it's second life compatible. I put some of them inside the resources, I think. Okay, so there are five, but I have more, so I'll put more. All of these are evenly lit, except for the pink one. That was not, well, okay, everything that says kitty in front of it is something that I edited. What are you doing? But I'll add more. So to change my HDRI, I go to display settings. Under environment map, I choose one of mine. So you can already see it's even on front and back. And then I also add on the GL light filter, the global light filter, which um, does a combo blender, but I send it to you. It looks like this. And I switch over to base color. <laughs> I go to base color. Here, let me reset my windows. And I'm gonna start with the glass. So this is the outer. Um, does anybody know how to keep Adobe from noticing cracked versions of their software when using genuine versions of their software? Um. There's something called anti-CC or something like that. 
you can find. It'll keep it cracked. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with the glass. I'm gonna add a fill layer, so I use the paint bucket. And then I click and drag the filter onto where it says base color. And so this basically gives it evenly lit shading on front and back also. I go inside these channels and change it. Um, I don't always do the same thing. It depends on the object that you have, what you make the um, settings to. But usually I start here. So I bring the um, gradient all the way back. So it's heavy shadows. And I make sure where it says AO color, it's all the way up. So that's the max level of shadows. And I named this base. So I'll control C to copy and I'll paste this same base on all of the parts. And then I'll go back into material and I'll start to do my texturing. Um, the shortcut to go into orthographic view is I think function six. Is it? Yes, it's FN six. So what's the difference between blender glass and substance painter glass? Um, Blender doesn't render glass. Substance painter does. Well, Blender doesn't render glass in one texture, like the one matte that you use in Second Life. Substance painter does. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with... I'm going to leave the glass for last, just because that's the most steps. I'll start with the top of the head. So, of course, I want it to be pink, the outside, and then the inside, um, white, because that's her face color. So, you can either use a fill layer or a material. There's something in here by default. It's one of the default textures, but I use that all the time. It's the PVC. I use that all the time. So if something is shiny, I'm using the PVC. So I just click and drag it in. And then the material applies. I go to base color and I'm going to change the color to the pink that I want. Different materials have different settings, but one that's pretty consistent is the metallic and the roughness. So I always bring the roughness down when I want it to be shinier. And then the metallic, you can do it as you see fit. There are other things that are usually in a material like normal and height. This one doesn't have that, so I'll just show you in something different. But right now, this is applied to the whole mesh, which we don't want it to be. We want it to be only on the outside, on the ears. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to go to add black mask. Then I'm going to go to, what is this called? Polygon fill. And go to object select. And I'm only going to select... Well, I don't know, the outside. Yeah, the outside. So I'm going to label this as kitty 
outside. When I added this material, it went to the top. So the shadows that I added in are at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab where it says base and I'm gonna put it on top. And I consistently do this. I'm gonna turn off the metal, the roughness, the normal and the height so that it doesn't affect the layers below it. We only want the color. And yes, just like in Photoshop, we can choose multiply, overlay, soft light, or hard light to maintain those shadows. You can also lower the opacity or add levels. Okay, so that stays on top at all times. I can always go back and change it or even duplicate it so I can control C and control V to get the shadows even darker. In this case, it's not needed, but for things like metals and stuff like that, it'll be more useful. All right. So now I want to do her face. So I'm going to add another plastic. I'm going to make it white or off white. Do the same steps. Right click, um, add black mask, go into polygon fill and select only her face. I'm going to drag it below the base. And then for this section, I'm done. So now I'm gonna move on to her face features and her bow. Um, let's just say that we like the color that's on her hat or whatever you wanna call it, but we just want it to be a little bit different. We can always copy and paste so we can copy and paste. We can clear the mask and then select just her bow. You can do this in either the, the 3D or the 2D. You could choose to have her bow in different colors or all the same. I just want to make it a little bit darker. Red, okay, I'll do red, that's fine. I'll do it, do cherry red. My neck keep this connected to me and, a and me and AT&T gonna fight. My mom been saying the same thing and she has AT&T. Maybe it's something going on with them. Remember to bring up your base. Turn off all channels. I'm going to change it to overlay. Now I'm going to do her eyes. And for her eyes, I would honestly keep the same PVC. So I'm just going to control C to copy, control V to paste, rename it eyes and whiskers. Change the color to black. Clear the mask and then select and 
And then one more time for the nose. So control C, control V, rename it nose. Recolor it to, I think it's orange or yellow. So I'm gonna, this is a good color. So I'm gonna clear the mask and select her nose. And that's where we're at so far. I think I forgot to do the inside for this mesh, but it's okay. I'll still show you the transparency. Yes, you can draw them. You can draw the mask too using the paint right here. So I can show you, for example, the glass. Let's make this red or something. You can add your black mask. And just color on what you want to keep there. This is a big way of how I do my clothing too. So I'll make a fill layer. I'll put it the color I want for maybe my shadows or my details. And then I'll add it the edit the mask as needed. You can also play with the height. And the roughness. At any time you can go back and adjust it. Um, yes, the stabilizer is, um, here, under where it says distance, so you can increase or decrease it as needed. Yes, you can also do that. So you can also click, hold down shift, and click somewhere else, and it'll form a straight line. Does so anybody know the activation wizard stuff after you download Substance Painter? Um, I can help you out once I'm done with the overview. To move the lighting, it is shift and right click drag. Um, let's see, anything else? You can um, import Photoshop brushes. So you just drag and drop and import it as a brush. You can import pictures. You can import PNGs. You can import materials and filters and environment maps. I'm trying to think, is there anything else before I do um, the transparency? But honestly, I think that's the most of it. Any questions of anything so far? Can we um, get the even lighting base when you finish too? Yes, you can. I'll put them inside the uh, thing. This one I just made, so it's not in there yet. Before that, I was using this one. So this is even, front and back too. And so is this one. Some of them I gave are dark. So you have to increase the exposure to see it a little bit better. But it still looks good, even front and back. Oh yes, I have to show y'all how to set up that. Are you going to do a stamp for like the logo? Um, No, but I'll show you how to do it. I wouldn't do that for this, but I can show you how it's done. Let's find a PNG or something. Um, Hello Kitty PNG. It's not all that. It's okay. It's just to show you. It's just to show you. And I'm going to be all that. 
click the alphabetical order. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate these things. Don't do me. Oh, we should do this one. <laughs> Let's do this one. Okay, so when I import the picture, <laughs> I'm going to select that it's a texture. It goes to import your resources too, and you have three options. The first one is the current session, so you would use that if you don't plan on using the same thing over and over again in all your stuff. To save it to the project would be like if you're going to share the blend file like for me when I do customs, I save it to the project so they have access to everything I use, including the HDRI, the materials and stuff, they'll all have access to it. And then library is just permanently there. In this case, I don't need this image permanently in here, so I'm going to just import it to my current session. Okay, so now all I have to do is click and drag and drop. I set it as base color. And yeah, you can move it. Rotate it. And do everything you need to do. Um, no, I don't really use shortcuts inside of here. There are, but I don't know. I don't use them too much. Okay, this, um, when we drag and drop it, automatically uh, is called warp projection. There are other ways to get it to lay because sometimes this can be glitchy. You see the arrows. It's basically trying to approximate and lay it down on there it don't always work so um what's the question yes and i okay take your time so under where it says projection, I can change it to fill, to fill up the entire um, UV. Or I can change it to UV projection, which I usually use the most. So this way I can just move it inside my 2D window. Okay, um, and that's it, if there's no other questions about this. So let's do the transparent, the transparency, if y'all want. I'm dead. Okay. So for the transparency, it's not that hard. It's just a few steps. Um, we have to change the render engine. So we go from ASM Metal Rough, and we just go to Alpha Blend with Alpha Blend. You have to be careful because there are two. You don't go to the testing one. You go to the Alpha Blend one. The texture will still look the same. And then now you go to texture set settings. Make sure you're on the item you want to be transparent. And we scroll to where it says channels. And we just add an opacity channel. And that's it. So now we can turn on the opacity for any material.
and then just make it transparent. Now, there are glass um, or crystal type materials out there that you can use. But for me, when I'm doing my like glass and stuff, I just start off with a simple fill layer. I add the opacity channel. I bring the metallic all the way up, the roughness all the way down. And then I just lower the opacity. Um, this HRI is a little bit strong, so I'm going to bring the roughness a little bit less. No, when you upload it in Second Life, it'll already be transparent. But you have to be careful because you might accidentally make it more transparent than it needs to be. Because this is a black background, it's easy to see the transparency. Um, it depends on how you upload things. So when I'm uploading things and something is transparent, I put that on its own material. And when I import things into the Second Life, I don't join them together. I'll just leave them separate and then import it. And then texture to look glossy. Um, well, this will look glossy, but you can just change the HDRI. Like some are better than others when it comes to getting different results. So like this one I think is nice. You just gotta switch it up. What was the default? What that is that a default? No, the default is the panorama one, which isn't bad, but it's not good for a second life. Just a few things. I'm going to throw in because you won't understand it now, maybe, but you're going to understand it later. These are my favorite things to do. So I love to do gradients. I just love gradients. I love gradient colors. I love when people texture their sub gradients. So, and when I do it for my clients, they be loving it. So I'm going to just show you how to do it for the future. Um, so let's just say I want this to be a gradient pink to purple I'm going to add a fill layer I'm going to search for gradient um, it's inside what is this the textures so there's one that says gradient builder and then one that says gradient hue I forget which one is which but I think it's this one the gradient builder and then it'll come in oh I'm on the wrong part but that's okay it still looks nice up here so you'll see all the colors. You can increase the quality of the the quantity of the colors here. So yeah, I'm just showing you it's there. You can also change the rotation or move it in here. I just love gradients, so hopefully one of y'all use it. Okay, what else? I like to use um. I don't know. Really, I only use the hard brush and the soft brush. But for stitches and detailing and stuff, there are zippers in here. So I'm going to just give you a few examples. Because I know we're not doing clothes, but it don't hurt just to show you. So let's just say I want to do a zipper on clothes because we do not mesh our zippers on because that's a nightmare. And... I knew it I knew it's a nightmare, but on my last custom or second to last custom I did it anyway. And I can't rig it. So just don't do it. Just don't. It depends on where it's located. If it's on the chest up, don't do it. Okay. Um, so yes, how we do our zipper. 
part of my arm. We're going to do it on the glass part. Okay, so I'm going to make it um, metallic and rough. I'm going to add a black mask. And I'm going to look for a zipper. So this is the same method for... Um, for seams and stitches and folds and all of that. So me showing you the zipper is the same for everything. Um, UVs, you gotta have good UVs for, for the zipper to show. You gotta have a space committed just for the section the zipper is gonna be on. So you can get detailed results. Okay, so here is the zip. And I'll go into the height. And yeah, that's that's it. I mean, it's simple, but I love this feature. I use it all the time. So now that we have our mask there, we can do quick and easy recolors. We can do quick and easy texture change-ups. So let's just say for whatever weird reason I wanted it to be plaid, I could just drag and drop. And now it's a plaid zipper, you know? Um, To make the brush bigger is the bracket. These brackets here. On your keyboard. Or you can... um. You can change it up here. Yes, this is Photoshop on. So if you know Photoshop, you can do Substance. Um, when you're doing skins and stuff in Substance Painter, which I don't do because I prefer a different program, you just switch it to base color. So that means no artificial light at all. And hair bases too. But yeah, that's it for now. I'm not sure if we're going to get to it. It might be like a after the class is done type of thing or an extra day or a day that everybody is just so on point that we have plenty of extra time. It's the substance sampler, which um, will AI generate any substance material you want. So if it don't exist, you could just AI make it from a picture. I think I only got to it once in one class. But yes, I'll show you a brief, brief preview. Let's look for like leather texture. Let's just save that out. Is this it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go to create new and is it froze? It is. It's laggy a little bit. So it says to start, drag and drop your images. You can also import already existing substance materials if you want to edit them. I'm gonna drag and drop this picture. I don't know where it went, so I'm going to just use this. So you get some options. You have image to material, multi image to material, or texture import. I believe it's image to material. So I press import. Okay, so it AI generates the height maps and all of that stuff. I don't know why I'm lagging so much. I think the last time I was in here, I changed my settings to be Super HD. And I forget how to change it back, but I'll get it fixed for whenever I teach it. So we can add on certain layers. Um, the first one, the tiling to make it seamless. 
Um, you can affect the thresholds of where it tiles from and the smoothness of how it transitions. I don't like this one, so I'm going to delete it. Okay, so you can turn on blur and smooth and you can manually adjust how you want it to tile. You can also manually paint where you want it to tile from. Um, I'm lagging too bad. Hold on. Okay, we're just going to leave it like, like this because I'm lagging. But you have other options to throw in on your um, texture like, for example, the saturation. Um, you have the hue. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay. You have curves. Basically, you have a whole bunch of layers you can add on to it and then export and use the texture and substance painter. But I'm going to leave it alone for now. Yeah, you need to crack for that. I'll find it. Okay. And I think that's it. Are there any questions? It deleted itself from my laptop. What did? So this painter. Oh, that wasn't Substance Designer, though. That was Substance Stager. I deleted Substance Designer. I still need the Activation Wizard to use Substance Painter. Okay. Okay. <laughs>